Um, hello everyone. My name is uh, Ting Ran Li. I'm a fourth year PhD in the environmental policy program. Uh, I'm doing mostly energy economics uh, and environmental economics. My research including um, here analyzing using um, electricity data from the households to identify behavioral impacts from the household and also some other research including co uh, collaborations with Billy Pizer on discounting and some other um, with Martin Smith in fisheries in the Mormon school. <laughs> so it's like a very diverse profile. Okay. So, so to start with this project, uh, here the major objective of this project is to, as you can see, disaggregate getting the behavioral factors in residential loan profiles. So what does that mean to tell the story here? Um, as you probably see in several uh, statistic sources, the residential sectors uh, in the energy data consumption profile has been really taking off. If you only look at the United States, um, uh, in the recent years or the recent decades, the residential share of uh, electricity usage has been uh, actually passing over commercial and um, the other industrial uses. And if you're looking at other regions of the world, for example, China, which is um, actually the central data set from where I'm using for this project, um, the residential sectors are actually uh, gradually starting to increase the share of consumptions in the end use part. Right. And then there are some other questions, which is, do we only care about the amount of electricity used, or do we also care about how the people are using electricity, right? Because by observations and some machine learning studies, we can show that even though the load files are varied differently across the days and households, um, not everyone uses the energies the same way. And especially if you do some clustering of the load, this is just an example from the OPAR study, you can find there are different load profiles which potentially indicating people's behavioral factors. So what here is data driven is actually behavioral driven, right? So um, part of the study in my project is to use a similar clustering method to identify different load profiles. And then how would that fit into the story I'm trying to tell? And why do we uh, care about studying the behavioral effects of the uh, households? There can be several reasons. One is that it's policy driven. So if you know different profiles of behaviors of households, it might be relating to how you target the demand response program, or how you design a dynamic pricing program for households. Right. Or it might be uh, health related. So depending on what kind of uh, pollutants you are looking at, people will be responding to pollutions outdoors by changing their behaviors the most simple one would be switching activities also. Right. And that will um, be showing to be exponentially lower the exposure of people's uh, explosions to pollutions and driving down the estimations of health co -estimates. And then uh, the practical challenge is that it's very difficult to recover these behavioral information using some regular information sources such as surveys or um, environmental variables, for example. And you can see that uh, even though in some cases the household surveys are available, they are often very time consuming and only covers just a subset of the population and it's very difficult to identify who it is. So what's the objective of this project? Motivation by the background here. I'm trying to uh, first discovering the uh, different load profiles or as an indicator of behavior patterns from the loads and examining households averting behaviors to air pollution and using those profiles to identify uh, the potential constraints to those responses and then finally providing some possible suggestions to improve in, uh, behavioral studies. And the data set I'm using is uh, about 500 household meters uh, with hourly consumption data sets in Shanghai for two years. And um, the daily consumption data set can be expanded to about, about 1,000 households uh, paired with survey data. And the methods here I cited briefly is using both the econometrics method and machine learning method to um, complete these objectives. So what do we learn from the lows? Uh, here I summarize the major uh, findings is that we can 
in general classify three different types of loads from the residential household consumptions. And as you can see that summer loads and non-summer loads are a little bit different, uh, as indicating uh, a very different, um, by the red lines, a very different load concentrations uh, after the midnight. Right? So here I show you the proportions of the load profile as being classified into different clusters. And the flat base load is about uh, 50 to 60 percent of the seasonal loads, and the other two clusters are uh, about 20 percent. Okay. So what can we learn from the or what can we learn to use the clusters? Um, here, as one of the major objective, uh, objectives, is to looking at the behavioral responses to pollutions. And I find that especially these responses will be hugely aligned with the, um, how intensified the demands are during different time periods. So as you can see, for example, for the summer loads, in the, um, in the uh, late evening and late night peakers, it's more corresponding to um, these evening peakers and midnight peakers clusters. The, uh, the bars indicating the differences, how different they are responding, how, how differences their responses are comparing to the fat loaders, right? So if you are a midnight picker, more likely you will be responding about eight to 10 percent more uh, in your electricity consumption comparing to the fat loaders. And that's similar findings is also uh, occurred in the non-summer loadings. As you can see here, since the load has been shipped a little bit forward compared to the summer loads, uh, we find both the evening and midnight pickers to have a larger responses in the after 7 p.m. time regions. So the last part is to see what if we don't have these micro-level data such as hourly electricity consumptions. Can we still identify the households from um, variations of other variables, surveys, environmental variables that are public, uh, publicly available to identify what kind of uh, load profiles this household might be. <coughs> so here, the method I'm using is a supervised machine learning method uh, called regularized logistic regression and find that actually the prediction accuracy of this method is very low. So as you can see, the F1 score, which is a usual indicator of the performance, a prediction is only like about 60%. The best one would be one and worst would be zero. Uh, and then the balance accuracy is about half. Um, so that's kind of suggesting that if we are going to consider doing a very detailed or more accurate behavioral studies, uh, either you need to redesign your surveys to include the, um, some kind of scheduled questions, or you need to um, acquire some of the micro-level data sets so that we can recover these behavioral information that we can get.